Morning, this is Mrs. Bridge and this is a year four video week 13. In this lesson you'll be looking at a STEM project which is combining some lessons together. So this joins together um, subjects such as design, art and design as well as science. Learning objective to learn about different bridges and how they are designed to investigate and create a bridge at home and that part is optional so you do not have to do the create a bridge at home. Keywords. What I would like you to do is to pause the video and I would like you to research the meaning of these keywords. You can use an online dictionary to help you. Hopefully you will know what some of these words mean. So structure, suspension, pillars, cables, steel, beam, tension, compression and gravity. Starter, when was the last time you travelled on a bridge? Can you think of any famous bridges? Pause the video and write the names of three bridges. Can you name any? So in this lesson, we're going to look at types of bridges. What are bridges used for? What bridges have you seen in real life? Where were they? Were they designed for people to walk over? Do you know the name and location of any famous bridges? Did you know that there is more than one type of design for bridges? Let's have a look at some of them. Okay, so here you can see four bridges. Take a good look at them. Are they similar? Do you think they are built of the same materials? Materials is a big part of art and design. How big do you think these bridges are? Okay, let's look at the bridge there in the top left hand side in Japan. Um, you can see that it has cables and you can see that it has some structures to keep it standing tall. I wonder if you know how long that bridge is. Uh, next we have the Golden Gate Bridge. You will notice that it is a burnt orange colour. I wonder why the designer has designed it to be that colour. Does it have a practical reason or is it just for show? Then we have the Tower Bridge. You might recognise this one. This one is in London. Um, you will notice it has two rather decorative towers there. Are those towers just for show or are they there for a purpose? And the last one here in this picture is the Fulfrau Bridge in Firth of Fulf, Scotland. What do you notice about this bridge that is different to the others? Suspension bridges. A suspension bridge uses ropes, chains or cables to hold the bridge in place. Vertical cables that's the cables going down, are spaced out along the bridge to secure the deck area, the part that you walk or drive over to get from one side of the bridge to the other. Suspension bridges can cover large distances. Large pillars at either end of the waterways are connected with cables and the cables are secured, usually to the ground. Due to the variety of materials and the complicated design, suspension bridges are very expensive to build. So here is the image that you saw in the beginning. This is the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, California. Cars pay a toll money to cross the Golden Gate Bridge in America, California. This suspension bridge has cables. The cables are supported by the towers. Why is the bridge painted this color? What practical reason can you think of for painting this suspension bridge burnt orange? Do you think the colour has been chosen to stand out? What would you see flying around in the sky? That's right, aeroplanes. The aeroplanes need to be able to see this bridge and that's why it's painted that bright sun, sun tanned colour orange there to make it stand out. Suspension bridges. The structure of a suspension bridge has changed throughout the years. Jacobs Creek Bridge in Pennsylvania was built in 1801. 
It was the first suspension bridge to be built using wrought iron chain suspension. It was 21 meters long. If one single link in a chain is damaged, it weakens the whole chain, which could lead to the collapse of the bridge. For this reason, wire or cable is used in the design of suspension bridges today. Even though engineer James Finlay promised that the bridge would stay standing for 50 years, it was damaged in 1825 and replaced in 1833. So this was the bridge that you saw in the beginning. It's the world's longest suspension bridge in Akashi Kaio Bridge in Japan. It is almost 2.5 miles long. And here is the other bridge that you saw in the beginning of the film, Suspension Bridge. This is Fourth Road Bridge, Scotland. The Fourth Road Bridge is made up of almost 40,000 tonnes of steel, 125,000 cubic metres of concrete and 30,000 miles of steel wire. Wow, you can imagine that that costs a lot of money to make. Arch bridges, these are really fancy, these ones. Uh, the arch bridge design is over 3,000 years old. In the past, arch bridges were usually made of stone, brick or wood. Modern, uh, more modern arch bridges are usually reinforced with steel or concrete so that they can last longer. The supporting pillars that are at either end of the arches are called abutments. I wonder if you know where you can see some of these arch bridges. Do we have any locally to us? An arch bridge uses a curved shape to spread the weight from the bridge over the curve rather than the weight bearing straight down. Any weight put on the bridge is carried outwards towards supports that are built into the ground on either side of the bridge. The arch is usually a semicircular shape. The design of the arch bridge and the materials that are made with, me, made with means that they are usually very strong bridges. And this is an example of an arch bridge and this is in Sydney Harbour, Australia. Between 2,500 and 4,000 people were involved in building the Sydney Harbour Bridge. The bridge has the nickname the Coat Hanger due to its shape. Can you see why? Cantilever bridges. The first cantilever bridge was built in 1867 by Henrik Gerber. He wanted to create a bridge long enough to cross larger distances, such as the main river in Germany. He was able to create a structure which had arms that met in the middle of the main river, allowing it to be crossed. Compared to today's cantilever bridges, Gerber's was basic and small, but this design allowed more complex and larger structures to be built. It was innovative and new, making Gerber a famous name in the engineering of bridges. Beam bridges. A beam bridge is the simplest type of bridge that you may come across. Think of a plank of wood that someone might use to cross a stream. This is a simple beam bridge. The beam part of the bridge is supported at either end where the weight of the bridge pushes down. You might also hear a beam bridge being called a girder bridge. What have we learned today? Pause the video and perhaps you can write some notes on the following bridges, suspension bridges, a beam bridge, an arch bridge and a cantilever bridge. If you were asked to build a bridge that was strong, which design would you base it on and what materials would you use? Is the design of a bridge important? Whatever the design of a bridge, it must support different weights across a single span. So it needs to be strong enough to carry a lorry. It needs to be strong enough to carry people and cars and some trains even cross bridges. So it has to be so, so strong. When building a bridge, we have to ask how far away can the ends of a bridge be and still support a certain amount of weight? And this is where the science comes in. 
Bridges are designed to withstand forces pushing down upon them like the weight of marbles or coins. The bridge must endure tension and compression. Tension is the result of opposing sides applying pressure. Compression is the force that gravity and weights like cars or coins put on bridges. So if you haven't already made some notes, I would like you to draw this chart. I would like you to, in the first column, place the type of bridges. So you should know four names of bridges. Write the names of the bridges in that column there. In the column next door, information about the bridges and examples, I want you to look back in the video and see if you can name and tell me some information about the four types of bridges that we've looked at today. Remember, you can pause the video or rewind the video at any time to help you. Okay, so if you've learned a lot about bridges today, here is a challenge for you. Amazing fact, the Sido River Bridge in China has been the world's highest bridge since 2009. It is 496 meters above the valley floor. This is the challenge. See if you can make a paper bridge, which will take the weight of a marble or a coin. It doesn't have to be a marble. Um, investigate how long the bridge can be before it collapses with the weight of the marble. The bridge must rest on two surfaces and stand at least 30 centimeters from the ground. The marble or the coin must begin to roll from one end and reach the other end without the bridge collapsing. Predict what you think will happen and then investigate. So remember, this is just a little challenge for you. It is optional, you don't have to do it. It's just a fun STEM activity for you to try at home. So if you are taking up this challenge, I want you to write a prediction. So. How far do you think your coin will roll or your marble will run? You could make a prediction based on the distance that it rolls from one side to the other side. What did you find out from your investigation? Perhaps you could try making a bridge from paper. Perhaps the extension would be to try and make it out of wood. What are the differences? Which one would be most successful? If you don't fancy creating the bridge at home, perhaps you can have a go at creating a fact file. Um, you could create your own fact file, including how many different types of bridge there are. Remember, use this video to help you. Um, add some details about the longest bridge, which was shown in this video, and where the oldest known bridge is, about bridges that has, have collapsed as well. You can add any information about bridges there. So remember, if the uh, creative challenge of making a, a bridge at home is not for you, then you can create a fact file. I'm going to say goodbye now, and I hope that you have enjoyed this video today, and I'll say goodbye. <laughs>